What up, everybody? Welcome to my call. Okay. We see the title. It says, Dear White People. All right, remember I told you guys that it was going to get real in the corner? Here's one of those moments where it's about to get real. I'm about to ruffle every feather up in here, and I don't care. This one's for you, Susan. This one is for you. All right, dear white people, let's get to it. Dear white people, get your people. That's it. That's the whole video. Dear white people, get your people. <laughs> we tap, bruh. We tap. All right. Look, so recently, we're all just, America just has a lot going on. Uh, we're taking L's with this whole presidency thing, but then we have the whole kneeling situation. Can we address this real quick because I think you guys misconstrued it because you guys don't read and you just watch CNN who's reporting false information okay so the reason why Colin Kaepernick stood was kneeling was for Mike Brown Sandra Bland Trayvon Martin just to name a few of the black people who've been killed in the streets that's why he was kneeling he was talking about the injustice he was highlighting the fact that white people aren't held accountable for killing black people that's why he knelt all right let's talk about why everybody else knelt they were kneeling because Donald Trump called them sons of bleep. That's why they were kneeling. Let's not misconstrue the two. It had nothing to do with the flag. Nothing. Why Colin Nell had nothing to do with the flag, period. Had nothing to do with the national anthem, period. It was all about the fact that Mike Brown died in the streets and the white man that killed him was not held accountable. That is why he knelt. That is why everyone else was kneeling. Let's not misconstrue the two. Okay, now, here we go. Let's heat up because I got I got to go somewhere and I got time to deal with y'all today and I've been telling y'all the same thing over and over. Okay, military people, your patriotism is racism. I called it out. I'm sick of it. Uh, yeah, be patriotic to the flag. How can you be, how can you be proud of a country? that does not really stand for anything that it's supposed to stand for. Equality, justice for all, it don't, it don't, no, no, none of that. It can't because I don't get the same opportunities that you get. Now mind you, I, I am a product of a military household. My dad served in the military for 25 years. Shout out to my pops, the vet, all right? Um, and so, you know, we have all these military people that follow us and they were really, really disappointed in me and my stance. Asked me, did I care? I didn't. Um, so they were really disappointed in the way I was saying that I was kneeling. Actually, I don't think I've stood up for the National Anthem in years, to be honest. I don't even know the Pledge, I know the pledge of Allegiance, but I don't say it. Now, ask me, do I stand up for the, nas the Black National Anthem? I sure do. Y'all want to know what it is? Lift every voice and that one. And then I pull up at the club, VIP, guess take on me, but I'll drink, say. What? I'll stand up for that all day. That's the Black National Anthem. Ask somebody. That's the Black National Anthem, okay? Anyways, all right. So the military people are like, Candace, I'm just so disappointed in you. Shame on you. Your dad falls. So my dad served in the military so I could have a right to stand, kneel, chew gum, do a backflip, cry, whatever I wanted to do to the National Anthem. He fought so I could have that right. So... Whether I kneel, sit, it has nothing to do with the troops, okay? It doesn't, doesn't. You, you sound stupid. All right, you sound real dumb. You sound ignorant. You sound, you, you sound stupid, Susan. You sound stupid, all right? So then, all right, so after I have talked about the military troops, let's, let's, let's remind something else. Okay, on the military bases all around the world, at 5 o'clock, the national anthem comes on. What do you guys do? Y'all run into y'all house so y'all don't have to stand in formation. So really, who's the hypocrite? And also, if you're so upset about them kneeling, why don't you just ignore them like you ignore black injustice anyways? You turn your head when all these people get shot anyways, so just turn your head while they kneel or turn the channel. Simple. No need to write a long post. No need to sit here and be up in a frenzy and talk about how you're disrespected and go on a block list and talk about how... Just shut up. If you really care that much, turn the channel. Simple as that. Simple as that. Turn the channel. All right, so now that we've talked about the military people, let me talk about something else. White people, I really think y'all don't know what to say when this stuff happens because I have, well, I have friends that were white, but they're not really my friends anymore no because they said I'm kind of like Malcolm X, and that's fine. Um, anyways, um, they don't know what to say. Like, I literally had a person tell me, like, I really don't know what to say. Like, what do I say? Like, when black people are, well, how do you feel? They're like, well, I feel really bad because you feel bad, and I hate to see my friends hurt, and, you know, I just don't know what to say, so I'm silent. But when you're silent, you choose the side of the oppressor. When people get gunned down in the street and you're up here posting about Kim Kardashian or whoever else, and you're not showing any, you know, any remorse or you're not speaking up on these things and using your white privilege, it really shows that you chose the side of the oppressor. I'm sorry. Sorry, that's what it means. And then like for you to tell the oppressed how to feel really blows me because like, if I push you down the stairs and I break both of your legs and your spleen, and then I tell you to get up and walk it off. Uh, I just hurt you. 
Don't you need a second to heal? Same thing goes with this. It's the same thing, bro. You can't tell me how to feel about being black. The reality is it's open season in America. The reality is that if I get stopped by the police, I could possibly be a hashtag. That's the reality of it. The reality is that if my dad were to get stopped, um, they don't ask him how many years he served. They just say license and registration. And if he doesn't show out the military card, they might shoot him. That's the reality of it. The reality is I'm going to create black children. They're going to live in this country. And every day I have to worry about if they're going to come home. That's the reality of what we're living in. Do you see why it's important that you use your privilege to speak up? Do you see that? Like, I don't understand. Um, so I'm tired of clapping back at you. Like, I'm tired. And, like, then let's get to white evangelicals. Oh, my God. Get your people. Lord, Lord, get your people. Okay? Because white people, white evangelicals, not all white people, but let's be clear, not all white people, because some of y'all are really great. But this is to the ones that just, get, just can't get it. White evangelicals. Um... What Bible do y'all read? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, when things happen, I don't understand why white evangelicals quote scripture to pacify us. I really don't. Take the scripture, throw it at the people who are killing us and hold them accountable. Also, what Bible are you reading? It can be. This is how I know we don't, we, we don't read. Okay? This is how I know Jesus is black. Let me show you. In the Bible, when there was a sin, when they were sitting in the temple, Jesus came up in the temple and was like, word, what's up, son? This shoe flips tables. Whoosh. He was upset because they were sitting in his temple. He was upset because they were robbing the poor. He was upset because they were, it was injustice going on. Jesus spoke, right? You should be so angered by what's happening to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Instead of saying heaven isn't segregated, you should be up here speaking for the people who can't speak because your savior spoke for people who can't speak. Oops. 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 My bad. We're not supposed to talk about that. We're just supposed to sing kumbaya moments, talk about heaven and how heaven isn't segregated. When we all get there, we're gonna be one. Maybe, but we're not there yet. And I really, I really believe if Jesus was walking the earth, like if he was here right now, I feel like Jesus would be on my side. We'd be flipping tables together. You got this one, G? Whoosh, I got your left. Whoo, you see what I'm saying? Like I just, I just don't think, and so maybe you don't know what to say. I don't know. But if you don't know what to say, why don't you ask black people how we feel? Start there. Don't use statements like, well, you just need to get over yourself. And if you don't want to stand for the national anthem, you can leave. And this is our country. Girl, how dare you? You stole this land from the Native American. <laughs> Christopher Columbus didn't find squat. It was already discovered. I hate to kill your little, little history books. And then after you discovered America, you came to Africa, you took me and my people, you chained us up, you put us on ships, and you made us build America. Ooh. So as far as I'm concerned, where, where do I go? And if I leave, do I take our inventions with us like the flat iron, peanut butter, the stoplight? See how your statement... Just get your people, okay? Just, just get your people. Please get your people. We tired. I'm tired. I don't have enough in me to keep fighting this fight with y'all, so stop, all right? All right, dear white people, get your people. Bring them to my corner so I can educate them. Everybody come sit in my corner because clearly you all, need to, you all need wisdom, all right? So I don't know what episode this is. This is my first rant. I hope it helps you guys out. All right, come back and sit in my corner.